Morning YouTubers, Dave here from Treasure Divers. Um, right, in this episode we're going to build a trailer. For the new dive boat. This is the new dive boat. It's a 17 foot fishing boat, come dive boat. It's got a little cabin on the front which I can't get into because I'm too big. Uh, it's got plenty of outside area. Here we go, it's getting kitted up. Uh, it's got a good powerful 50 horsepower two stroke engine. It's got um, a nice ladder there for getting back out of the water. Um, all kitted up, so that's nice. Uh, it's on the remotes, which is better as well. I didn't like being on the tiller control on the other boat. It's quite uncomfortable when you're going for any kind of distance with tiller control. And uh, so we've got a proper steering wheel now. and search for the Albemarle and all the other booty ships that we're going to come across. So there she is. She didn't come with a trailer, unfortunately. Um, so we've got to build a trailer today and that's the reason for this video. Also, I um, mentioned um, we had a white sprinter, didn't we? Which was a bit problematic on slipways. Um, so I sold it. And uh, here we go. This is the new... Uh, Treasure Divers vehicle. It's a, it's a 20 year old uh, Mercedes ML uh, 4x4 um, and that's it. It's a 4x4 and it's going to be easier for getting in and out of the slipway, launching the boat and recovering it. Made in America this. Um, I've had it a couple of months now. It's alright. It's, it's, uh, it's old. It's 20 years old but you know it was cheap and there uh, it goes. So uh, and it's got uh, came with 12 months MOT so you can't complain at that. Right. So, as I said, this is the reason for today's episode, is to build a trailer for this. That's windy today. I'm hoping we're going to get around it. I've got this boom thing set up with a furry thing on it, so hopefully it's going to get rid of that horrible buffery sound that we all hate when we're watching other people's videos. And uh, I've got Tim with me today. Obviously, Tim's a much better welder than I am, and uh, so that's why he's here. Uh, it's not for his uh, jokes; it's because he's a good welder. It's not for his looks either. And he eats a lot of apples. <coughs> right here's the uh, here's the beam. Uh, I was looking. I've spent a long time looking around on YouTube at different boat uh, trailer designs and uh, we came up with um, with something anyway we've cobbled something together on a bit of paper uh, which we've lost now I've lost that bit of paper we give Jeremy but never mind Jeremy's probably still got it but this is the axle beam um, this is where we're going to bolt the um, torsion torsion suspension units aren't they yeah they're not uh, leaf spring they're torsion so they're, they're cheap but they're, they're quite effective so we bolt them to that and then we bolt then we weld the rest of the frame to that and Bob's your uncle. So let's go. Right, so the plan here is to um, make a cut uh, in here where we're going to make a, it's got to have a fold in it, it's got to have a, a bend in it, it's, it's got to have a bend. So we're going to, to bend it, you've got to cut it out and then bring it in and then weld it. Uh, so that's the next bit, or well, the first bit. Hold on. Right, so the first thing to do is to take measurements of the boat. Yeah, yeah, that's about right, isn't it? Bend it, yeah, bring it in from there. Four meters. Yeah, yeah, four meters and then bring it in. About 13 feet if you're across the pond. Yeah, 13 feet, yeah. For your, our, our American friends. So we're using um, 40 by 80 box um, for this, and it'll be upright 
so she'll give it more rigidity. Right, Tim's just uh, marking up where the cut's going to be. So you cut it, take a sliver out, and then bring it in. Take a piece out. Bend it in. And then bend it in and weld it up. Right. Here we go, it's the first angle, the first main piece. I'll do the same to that piece now and get some cross members in. Right, so we've got two, uh, both sides now done, identical, they're, they're tacked, um, just so we can re retrofit them and make sure everything's all right before we weld them up. Well done, Tim. Tim, Tim, Tim doesn't need paying, he, he, he gets paid in biscuits and tea. He So we're just positioning the uh, axle now to get the optimum positioning for weight distribution and I'm pretty certain that that's about it. The That piece up there is where the ball hitch is going to be because there's going to be a tongue obviously there so the ball hitch will be there where that piece of uh, random piece of steel is there, box and then obviously that's the end. And this is where the axle is going to be positioned, just about there. And I think it's about right. The trailer's coming together nicely. It's pissing down with rain, but we're still persevering. Um, I had this grand idea to, these are bunks basically, uh, one each side, uh, they're adjustable, they're to support the hull at the back end really. Um, now to make them nice and protect them, to protect the hull, I thought we'll get some lay flat hose and put the lay flat hose on it all the way around and that will be a nice sort of plasticky, you know, uh, surface but I'll tell you what it's hard work trying to get it on there unbelievable suspension units going on torsion suspension units getting bolted on now and yes we do know it's upside down over and it's looking good 
I like that axle. It wasn't my invention, but I did see another one, a manufacturer using that design, so I had this one made. Yeah, it's very good. So we've just got to get it all welded up now. We've welded up all the underneath, and so we've just got to weld up all the top now. Yeah. That's the trouble with this British leather. You've got to keep drying. Yep, yeah. got to keep drying it. Good job the GoPro's waterproof. So it's uh, it's coming along, and uh, the reason why some of these colours are rusty and some are not is because basically this was the Mark One version. This trailer here, I haven't mentioned this yet. So I uh, I built this one here, and uh, had a fundamental flaw in the design, and that was the tongue was too long and it was flexing when I put the boat on it it was kind of you could see it bowing in the middle and I just wasn't really happy with it and, and I sort of looked at loads of designs and definitely the A-frame whatever this design is technically called is a much stronger and a much more versatile design so so I scrapped that one and we're taking all the components it's brand new but the only reason it's rusty is because I haven't got around to painting it um, but all the rollers, the whole, the um, kill rollers here, um, the suspension units, the wheels, the tyres, the hitch, it's all new. So we're basically taking everything off of this one, um, which was the Mark 1 version, and we're making this one. But we're making use of this uh, tongue here, so a draw bar, I think they call it a tongue in the States, we call it a draw bar. Um, so we're reusing that piece, and it's... Um, He's sort of fitted it into there rather nicely. Look, it looks uh, pretty sexy that. Um, so that's that. And then uh, we're reusing this as well. This is brand new, but again, it's gone a bit rusty. But uh, this is all new as well. So uh, that explains why some of it is rusty metal and some of it is new. And there's Tim. He's had enough now. He's soaking wet. He's. He needs some biscuits, we've run out of biscuits to feed him. He's at all, he's at all the biscuits, but I keep feeding him tea. Yeah, it's gonna go on strike. The welder keeps packing up, well, it doesn't pack up, the welder keeps tripping because uh, it's obviously through to the main fuse box in my house, in my cottage. And because it's an old uh, transformer-based um, welder, it's, uh, it uses, it keeps tripping anyway. But one day we'll uh, we'll be able to afford a inverter welder, but it's actually pretty good, isn't it? Isn't it, Tim? You quite ple you quite it's not bad, actually, yeah uh, for a low budget, low budget. Um, machine. It's it's not welding too bad. I got it up flat stick, um, but for for this sort of three mil material, it's it's doing just fine. So yeah. Uh, it's very. I bought this years ago. This welder, it's cheap, cheap as chips. It was at the time. Um, so fair play to Draper MIG welders. I mean, it's you know, it's, uh, it's I've afforded so much stuff with it. It's amazing. Um, there you not, go. Not what I'm used to. No, no. Tim's obviously used to much much better equipment, but three uh, phase, 350 amp. yeah, 350 amp three phase um, MIG welders, but. Uh, he, he's slumming it today, bless him. Uh, I'll have to get him another packet of biscuits now, I feel sorry for him. But, uh, there we go, it's getting dark I think, but uh, we're persevering. 